Have you ever felt awkward starting a conversation with a stranger? Perhaps you're at a networking event or a social gathering and you see someone you'd like to connect with, but the words just won't come out. It's like your tongue is tied up in knots. You're not alone. Many people, even the most extroverted among us, struggle with this. We fear saying the wrong thing, being rejected, or simply not being interesting enough. This fear of initiating conversations with strangers can hold us back in many aspects of our lives. It can prevent us from making new friends, expanding our social circles, or even advancing in our careers. But what if there was a way to overcome this fear? A way to confidently start and keep a conversation going, regardless of who you're talking to. That's where we come in. In today's video, we're going to introduce you to a simple yet powerful technique that can help you not only start conversations with ease, but also keep them flowing naturally. This technique is called the ping pong method. It's about more than just breaking the ice. It's about creating genuine connections with people you've just met. It's about turning those awkward first encounters into meaningful conversations and potentially lasting relationships. So if you've ever wished you could talk to strangers without feeling anxious or uncomfortable, this video is for you. Today, we will help you overcome these fears with a simple yet effective technique called the ping pong method. So, what exactly is the ping pong method? Well, picture a game of ping pong. The ball bounces back and forth between the players, keeping the game alive. The ping pong method is a conversation technique that mirrors this action. Imagine the dialogue between two individuals as the ping pong ball. One person serves an idea, opinion, or story. This could be as simple as a comment about the weather or as complex as a philosophical idea. The other person then returns the ball with their thoughts, experiences, or questions related to the initial serve. Just like in a ping pong game, the conversation continues to bounce back and forth, each person taking turns to speak and listen. This method ensures that the conversation remains balanced and engaging. It's not about dominating the dialogue, but rather sharing it equally. The beauty of the ping pong method lies in its simplicity. It's not about using fancy words or having profound thoughts. It's about active listening, responding genuinely, and respecting the other person's turn to speak. It's crucial to understand that the goal here is not to win the conversation, but to keep it flowing and engaging. The ping pong method is about fostering connection, promoting understanding, and building rapport. It's about creating a space where both parties feel heard, valued, and respected. Remember, the goal is not to win the conversation, but to keep it flowing and engaging. Now, how can you put the ping pong method into practice? Let's delve into the process one step at a time, shall we? First things first, initiating the conversation. This is the serve in our ping pong analogy. It could be as simple as a hello, a compliment, or a comment about your shared environment. This initial serve sets the tone for the rest of the game, or in this case, the conversation. Remember, the goal is not to win, but to keep the ball in play. Next, we alternate turns, speaking and listening. Just like in a game of ping pong, it's essential to strike a balance between speaking and listening. If one party is doing all the talking, the conversation becomes a monologue. If both parties are speaking at the same time, it's chaos. So, remember to take turns, listen attentively when it's not your turn, and respond when it is. Now, on to responses. A good response keeps the conversation going, just like a well-placed ping-pong shot it keeps the ball in play. Your responses should be open-ended, inviting the other person to share more. For instance, instead of responding with a simple yes or no, you could say something like, Yes, and how about you? Or, no, but I've always wanted to try it. What's it like? This encourages the other person to share their thoughts and experiences, promoting a deeper conversation. Finally, don't forget to practice. Like any new skill, mastering the ping pong method takes time and practice. Start small, maybe with a stranger in the grocery store line or a new colleague at work. As you get more comfortable, you can tackle more challenging conversations. Remember, the aim of the ping pong method is not to win the conversation, but to create a back and forth exchange of thoughts, ideas, and experiences. It's about building connections, understanding others, and learning from them. With practice, you will get better at steering the conversation and keeping it engaging. So go on, 
serve that conversation, and let the game begin. So, what are the key points to remember about the ping pong method? First and foremost, remember that the ping pong method is all about creating a back and forth exchange, just like a game of ping pong. It's about asking open-ended questions, actively listening to the other person's response, and then building on that response with your own thoughts, ideas, or further questions. This creates a natural flow to the conversation, making it engaging and enjoyable for both parties involved. Secondly, practice is absolutely crucial. The more you use the ping pong method, the more comfortable and proficient you'll become at it. Start with small, everyday conversations and gradually work your way up to more complex dialogues. It's a skill just like any other, and it can be honed with patience and persistence. Next time you find yourself in a situation where you need to start a conversation with a stranger, remember the ping pong method. It could be the key to unlocking exciting new relationships and opportunities.